Hello, and welcome to the What's New video for Inspect 2019 Build 7910. My name is Matt Hahn, and I'm the General Manager here at Codeware. Today, I'm going to go through some of the new features that we've added into our Inspect program. So let's get started. So what you see in front of you is a very simple cylinder. Um, we have the ability to model simple componentry or entire vessels, depending on the application and how you're using the program. Now one of the first features I want to talk about is a new flaw type that we've added in. We've added in the level 1 assessment for API 579 part 9, so that's your crack-like flaw assessment. So I'll just zoom in on this cylinder, and you can see I've already modeled this. It looks like a little stitch symbol right there. That represents our crack-like flaw. Now to model this on any of your componentry, you simply go up to your API 579 menu and select part 9, crack-like flaw, level 1 analysis. Now this is in addition to the already existing FEA approach that we've included in SPEC for many years. But let's go through the dialog quickly. So I'll just double click on my crack-like flaw over here on the right and open up the dialog as you see here. So here is the crack-like flaw dialog for a level 1 assessment. So let's just go through the inputs really quickly here. You can see at the top there's an option for an identifier as well as an option to specify the GPS location of your crack-like flaw. Working down through the dialog, the next thing it shall do is locate the flaw center point. Now if you've used our products before, this is identical to locating a nozzle. You simply set, specify an offset as well as an angle, and then if you want to offset it from a seam of a component or from the datum line as well. Then there'll be the setup of the crack itself. So you'll enter in the measured flaw length right here, as well as the flaw depth, your assessment temperature, assessment pressure, and your distance to major structural discontinuity. From here, there'll be inputs for your loss, as well as your future corrosion allowance. And if your flaw is not orientated in a principal plane or it's not normal to the surface, we have options down here below under the flaw orientation. Simply select the option, and you can specify the angle, and inspect will determine the equivalent flaw length to be used for the assessment. This would be the same if the flaw is not normal to the surface, as you can see here by the image. Then finally down below, there will be selections for the location of the flaw, the flaw type, the surface location, the weld seam, as well as the orientation to the weld seam. And that's it. So let's click OK. And I'm going to go ahead and run the report and let's have a look at the report that you'll get. So here's the report. I simply go over to the left and I select the op or the uh, crack like flaw report right here and we can go through it. Now as in codeware fashion we always give you a nice detailed report with all everything detailed out so you can follow along with exactly what's going on. So you'll see here a result summary, a geometry check, your material check, your brittle fracture check, and then down below there's the permissible crack flaw length. And we included the charts from part 9 for you so you get a visual reference as to where your crack length is in relation to the allowable crack length permitted per a level 1 assessment. Okay. Now this can also be used if you're very close to the line, you know, maybe you're not comfortable with you know, releasing it, you may want to go do an FEA analysis on that as well, which again is included in Inspect for you. So that's available. So I'm going to click back to the model now. And again, if you need to model a crack-like flaw, simply go to the API 579 menu and select Part 9 Crack-like Flaw Level 1 Analysis. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to a, model, uh, a finished model right here, a vessel, to talk about the next feature, and it has to do with older codes. Now, we've been asked for many, many years, what do we do with older codes? How can you help me with older codes? So currently, we have back to 1995 um, available, um, both in our Compress and Inspect programs. But in Inspect, we are actually able now to go back even further. So if you go up to the Codes menu, up here at the top, and we select on the ASME option, when the dialog presents itself, you'll see an option here for older codes. It's just a checkbox, and it allows you to re-rate using a more recent code edition as for NBIC 3.4. Now, a couple things to mention here. Now, the codes that we have available do go back to 1950, um, but there is something here is that we want to make note of the year 1968. Okay, that is a, that's a key year um, when we're looking at it, and there is actually an option that presents itself for using higher allowable ASME allowables per MBIC interpretation 98-4 if applicable. So if applicable, what does that mean? 
So what we're going to do, this is going to be three checks, we're going to make sure that the MDMT based on design pressure is adequate, the vessel is not operating in the creep range, and is not in lethal service. Now if you meet all three of those checks, Inspect will use the 3.5 design margin to give you the higher allowable stress. If it fails any of those checks, or if you select a year before 1968, Inspect will use the pre-1999 allowable stress based on the 4.0 design margin. So this is a big economic value if you're looking at older tanks because this will save you a lot of money because you'll find out you'll actually have more material thickness that you can use for corrosion allowance. So this is a big option to take advantage of if you are looking at older tanks. So the next option I want to show you, it has to do more so from the maintenance inspection side, uh, thickness inspections. So again, I'm going to use the same model here. And you can see the little black points here. These are going to be my thickness readings. Now I'm going to come up to the top and click on my maintenance inspection right here. And this will open up my inspection grid. Now we've been asked a few times, you know, can we export this data? Can we import it? How can I get this to my field inspectors? Well, what we can do now is we can actually take these grids once you set them up with where you want the measurements taken, you can export this as an Excel file. So you simply go to the data collection menu and select import or export Excel spreadsheet for data collection. And you can export this um, format as an Excel file. Now I've actually gone ahead and um, export it. So what I'll do is I'll open it up here for you. And this is what it will look like. So it'll look exactly as the dialog does um, in the inspection maintenance that you see. There's a nozzle, elliptical head, your shells. But where this is beneficial is say, let's say you are operating in say Texas, but your site and your field inspector is in Arkansas. You can export this Excel file, send it to the inspector. He can fill it out. And the key thing is here, he can send it back to you and you can import this back into inspect. So you simply come to the data collection menu, select the import option again, and check the option import Excel spreadsheet and the data will come in and your new inspection data will be presented for you as well. So it's a faster way to spread information around so you're not having to hand type things in or trying to get information from the inspectors. You can give them the format that you wanna see your inspections done in that way. Okay, so for the last two options, I'm going to switch over to my piping file right here. And you can see it's just a simple pipe run. Now, the other thing we did in terms of the inspections is we've allowed you to quickly add CMLs onto any of the models. So if you go up to, in this case, since it's piping, it's going to be API 570, the 570 menu. You can come down and select the option, quick add, edit CML. Or what I like to do is press the shortcut keys, which is F6 in this case. So I'm going to hit the F6 function key and you're going to see a CML being dragged around the pipe. Now you can drag it anywhere along the pipe circuit or vessel um, depending on what you're looking at and just drag and drop it. Type in the new measured thickness, click OK, and that will get updated onto your maintenance inspection to be used for future scheduling as well. So it just allows you to quickly model these points in a much more efficient manner. And finally, the last option we added in, or the last big option we added in for this uh, video that I'm doing, is we've updated the B313 to the 2016 edition. So down in the bottom right-hand corner, you just right-click on the year, and you have the choice of the 2012, 2014, or now the 2016 edition. So that's been updated and inspect for you. Now, if you'd like to see all the other features, as long as technic, uh, as as well as technical write-ups on them, same with maintenance fixes, simply come up to the Help menu and select the view history option. Now this will take you to our history document. And as I said, we have full write-ups of all the features we've added in, as well as the maintenance fixes as well. Or if you have any questions or you'd like to see any of these features in further detail, please email sales at codeware.com or give us a call at 941-927-2670. I'd like to thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it very informative and have a great day.